Hello YouTube, how's everyone doing? It's Professional here. Welcome back to my playthrough of Red Dead Redemption. Let's continue from where we left off here. Oh, incredible. Simply incredible. Hello, Professor. Oh, hello, sir. Oh, Mr. Marston, sir. Good day, good day. How are you? Well, my family's health and well-being are being threatened by some unscrupulous government agents, and my own hard-won freedom is under duress. But these problems aside, I suppose I'm fair. Ah, <laughs> yes, the problems of civilizing nomads. Uh, tell me, sir, are you from Norse stock? Not as far as I know. I was raised in an orphanage. My father was Scottish. Hmm, unfortunate. Uh, you'd make an interesting case for my theory of natural population characteristics. Really? Well, yes. A, a white man, obviously, but 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 with a savage spirit. Uh, uh, trust me, sir, I mean savage in the best possible sense. Uh, natural nobility, but also simple, uh, pure. Uh, I've been looking at some blood samples through my microscope, and, and you know what? No. Uh, well, of course you don't. It's a remarkable breakthrough. I've been looking at the blood of both natives and white men of corresponding height, weight, and age, and you know what? Again, no. They're exactly the same. It's remarkable. It completely refutes my last book. But I'll tell you what, sir. This sabbatical in the field may have been somewhat forced upon me by circumstance, but my scholarship has benefited enormously. Would you uh, like to partake of a syringe of cocaine? I've quite enough for two. So, um, uh, the professor, what, here's what I'll say about this. The professor is actually one of the most hated characters in Red Dead Redemption. Um, even though he doesn't betray you, um, he's just hated because of just his personality, his racism, um, his drug addiction. And also, um, here's another thing. When he says he's, do you want some cocaine? That was actually common in that time period. In that time period, if you actually went to the pharmacy, you could actually be prescribed cocaine. They would actually give you cocaine. That actually happened. So this was actually common in this time period. It entirely restores the ego. It takes one back to a primal state. It helps my thinking enormously. <laughs> oh, oh, Nastas, uh, uh, come on. Uh, come in, sir. Would you like to take off your slippers? Or, or, or skin a rabbit? <clears throat> I know we cannot see the stars. But still, my heart is pure, and we meet as equals. These savages must be spoken to simply in metaphors. <laughs> no, sir. I grew up on a reservation and attended school. Oh, lovely. <laughs> but I can show you what you want to see. I know where the group of bandits you seek are hiding, both of you. Vanderlyn has attracted a following of young men on the reservation. They are turning to bad things. The savage heart cannot be conventionally civilized. I was right all along. <laughs> Where's Dutch Vanderlyn based? In the hills, in Cochine. Let's go. I know a way there that is not guarded. Uh, marvelous. <laughs> it's simply marvelous. So, um, uh, one thing I wanted to comment on is this professor is a uh, professor of eugenics. This was actually common in this time period where basically there was a bunch of racist scientists that were trying to say that certain races of people were inferior to white people. Uh, this was common in education in a lot of colleges across America even in this time period. And if you want to know when this finally ended, this, you know, this whole racist um, science, this officially started ending after World War II. So um, uh, it went up until, like, I would say the 50s, even the, uh, some parts of the 60s in America where there's academics who taught that in schools, but it really ended after World War II mostly. And the reason was because Nazi Germany was the biggest supporter of that racist science. And so when you saw just the genocide that happened, the mass murders, just the atrocities that the Nazis had committed, people had started getting away from that finally, and that, you know, that line of thinking was completely taken out of colleges. Hello, sir. A scientist, a criminal, and a savage. <laughs> what a strange trinity we make. Follow me. So... I understand we have a mutual interest in Mr. Vanderlyn. You gonna kill him too? Kill him? Good God, no! What is it with you people out here? No! no. Vanderlyn fascinates me. A white man living among natives. 
A civilized mind turns savage. It's reverse integration or regressive acculturation. Uh, I don't know. I, I haven't found a name I like yet. He was never that civilized. Ah, but of course. <laughs> Edgar Ross mentioned your unique history with the man, although I was away with the fairies at the time, I must admit. Surfing great waves of euphoria. <sighs> but anyway, yes, uh, some kind of Robin Hood, Oedipus, communist, tale of naivete and betrayal, if I remember correctly. You ran in a gang together, Professor. I wouldn't try to read too much into it. It's my job to read too much into everything, dear boy. So yeah, um, here's the thing about this, is, um, uh, the professor, uh, is extremely racist, um, he's very naive, he's very stupid also, but here's the thing, uh, even though he, he believes that Nastus and he believes that even John are inferior to him, but if the professor was out in the wild, if he had to survive on his own, I guarantee you he would not survive. John would survive just fine, Nasus would survive just fine, uh, they know how to live off the land, but this guy, just a stupid academic who just reads a bunch of no uh, racist nonsense, I guarantee you he would not last in the wild on his own. Ain't you never seen trees before? I thought you were a brave cultural explorer. It's this way. Yeah, exactly, this is what, 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 what I was talking about, is that And that's why you're so ignorant. Soon you will have cut down all of these trees. Me? Or are you making a sweeping statement about the white man in general? There is no respect for the land anymore. I'm sensing some hostility, Nastas. Some anger. Talk me through this primal emotion, where it's coming from. Don't worry about it, Professor. You see how much of an idiot this guy is? Is, um, uh, he's saying that, oh, you're making stereotypes about white people, but literally all he does is he makes just racist statements about other races all the time. Okay, this wolf is getting annoying. Okay, it's not chasing us anymore, okay. So yeah, this professor is, re he never leaves his, you know, his room, never leaves his office. And so how can you possibly be a professor? How can you possibly be um, studying just so many things and you never even leave your room? Remarkable. I'm afraid I don't really have much of a head for heights. More of a, a head for highs. <laughs> well, well, anyway, I'm sure Nastas will help you. I must be on my way. I've got work to do. Thanks for the help. Goodbye, gentlemen. Enjoy yourselves. Come on. I see a spot where we can climb up. See if you can find another route, Mr. Marston. I will have a look around. Okay, we gotta go up here. Uh, okay. I think I know what you gotta do. Yeah, this is it. I remember this now. There's a cave over here. Might go through or up the mountain. Excuse me.
Yes, it, look at this. A mine shaft. So yeah, this was probably a gold mine, um, uh, a gold mine that was used, uh, back, you know, decades beforehand. And so people came out in, into the west looking for gold. Uh, they were obsessed with finding it, but very few people actually got rich for finding gold. Uh, it, di it really didn't happen often. The people, the people that did get rich in this time period, uh, you know, or I should say in decades prior during the gold rush, were the merchants. They were the merchants who would follow the miners around, because what would happen is if you were, you were obsessed with finding, you know, gold, your shovel would break during, you know, looking for gold. And the, uh, when you, the traveling merchant would be there, he'd be there like in a tent right there next to the miners, and he'd offer to sell you a shovel for three or four times the price of what the shovel costs for. And you tell the merchant, you know, why should I buy it for three or four times more? I could just go to the town and get it for cheaper. And the, the merchant would just then say to you, oh, well, by the time you go to the town, you know, the gold's gonna be found by that time, and you'll lose it. And so these merchants didn't even bother looking for the gold because they oftentimes knew there was no gold themselves. They would just take advantage of these miners, and it was like a mental illness. It was a sickness trying to constantly obsess over trying to find the gold. And oftentimes they found the gold also in Native American lands, and when they went on the Native American lands, there was obvious confrontation and conflict. And so that's why the gold rush was actually one of the worst time periods in American history. It was not a good time at all. And that's why most of the towns in the Wild West... When you see them abandoned, uh, they weren't abandoned due to some, you know, crazy gunfight or something like that. They were oftentimes abandoned because of the gold rush. Because what would happen is when gold would be found, a town would be flourishing and have a lot of business. The gold would dry up, everyone would leave. There'd be no business coming to the town anymore. That's what happened to towns oftentimes. That's why so many towns were abandoned. This way! Yeah, so it looks like some crazy miner. I don't think these guys here, I don't think that they're part of... Oh, crap. Yeah, these guys are not part of Dutch's gang, these guys. Um, these guys are just some miners who have lost their mind looking for gold. A lot of people went insane during the gold rush. They constantly thought that they'd get rich and they, they never got anything. Imagine just like, you, you imagine you're like from New York, for example. You travel all the way across the country, you know, you, you spend all of your, your life savings trying to find gold, and you get nothing. You travel all the way across this very, very far land, and you find nothing while wasting your life savings. It drove a lot of people insane. Don't worry about me. Go look for Vanderlyn. Good luck. Find the rest of the hills. Um... You don't want to miss your chance. I'll be fine. I would go now, mister, before somebody sees you. Okay, how am I supposed to climb the rest of the hills? Uh, I think over here. Oh yeah, over there, okay. Crap. I... Yeah, my controller is just going crazy right now. I don't know why my controller is lagging a bit right now, right next to the bear attack. It's just wonderful, right? It's just wonderful. Crap! Don't you bite me! Okay, yeah.
Might as well skin this too, we get some money from it too. You stink. Like how John was able to skin an entire, you know, bear in just a few minutes. Might as well skin this one too. This is a messy one. Oh no. Oh! I, I, I completely forgot about that, how the- Worry about me. Oh great, all the way over here. The cougars in Red Dead, Red Dead Redemption 1 would kill you in just one hit. In one hit, you're dead. I completely forgot about that. There we go, got that now. Hey, it's free animals to skin right here. This will fetch a good price. The cougar probably worth the most amount of money. Come on, let's get this over with. Oh. You know what's actually weird, um, uh, is that Dutch, um, uh, Dutch hate, uh, hates, like, um, modern civilization and technology, um, uh, Mr. progressing. Boston? What's ironic is that he uses Mr. a C-93, which is actually one of the first semi-automatic pistols. Here you go, Mr. Marston. That stuff away. You banged your head. Nastus and I carried you down. Mm. Uh, well, uh, Nastus uh, heard the shots and he hurried up to rescue you and he carried you down. I improvised an escape plan. I'm more of a planner than a man of action. <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen. Friends of mine are with Vanderland. We must try to reason with them, sir. Vanderland's gang contains several natives. We must meet with them. And try to save them from disaster. My people have already endured many disasters. Before, this was all our land. And now we have brought you civilization. Well, sure, it hasn't been easy, but it hasn't been easy for anyone, Nastas. Why, I knew a man in Yale whose father once shot 18 natives in one afternoon out in Wyoming. Oh, the man was quite, quite traumatized. He took to lying with choir boys. For a wise man. You are a very stupid man, mister. 
Gentlemen, I'm gonna leave you to figure out right from wrong. You are simple-minded, sir. Thus, I do not blame you for not understanding reason. It, then again. <laughs> yeah, in, in that time period, you would have people like that, that they would look at something like that, like s a, some kind of sport. is disgusting. Sir, it's good to see you, old bean. Good to see you. And you too, Professor. Forgive me. I am in a state of remarkable agitation, partly due to standard narcotic impulses, but also due to the fact that I have finally solved the riddle that has tormented my mind these past eight years. What's that? The nature of the savage soul. What makes some societies great, like ours, and others, uh, yeah, not worse. I would never use it, but you won't do such as worse, but, 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 but lesser. Meaning? Meaning. What makes these beings less human than us? Closer to beast on the continuum between animal and god! You know, I argued with Fortescue at Yale about this. It caused a minor scandal. But I shall be proven right, sir! I shall! Mark my words! I shall show them all what civilization is all about. The redskins and the nubs at Yale. Come, sir! I have a way to say both our desires. I will bring you, Vanderlint and me, the evidence of savages reverting to type! Come, sir! Follow me! I asked the stars to bring the horses around front. Get, 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 quick, man, quick! My heart's beating like a drum! Try to calm down, Professor. Calm down! I I've never been so excited in all my life! Hello, Professor. Mr. Marston. Yeah, this mission, I remember what's going to happen here. This is it! Years of research! What were you talking about back there? Where are we going? Nastas has set up a meeting. A powwow, I think they call it. A meeting of minds, of souls. Indians and whites, academics and criminals coming together to find a common understanding. Nastas, this fool's making no sense. Some of Vanderlyn's men have agreed to meet with Professor McDougal up at Bear Claw Cabin. Why the hell would they want to do that? I think they are interested to find out what conclusions a white man has reached on hundreds of years of culture and society from the comfort of his hotel room. Wonderful! Do you think I could ask for a skin sample from the soles of their feet? I don't think that's a good idea. Yeah, it's gonna be at that abandoned lumber yard. I'm actually a little nervous, I have to say. The <laughs> touch of the old jitters. No kid. That's no small relief to have the two of you alone. Easy. It's a bear! Oh no, God, kill it! Come on. Thank heavens. No, let's get out Come of on. here! I'm still shaking! What a ferocious animal! That bear showed no signs of aggression. If we hadn't shot first, it most likely would have ignored us and moved on. It's all very well for you to say, but perhaps you have some kind of primal bond with these animals, but I, sir... Here we are. I forgot about that. I messed that up, guys, because if you actually don't shoot the bear, I think it leaves you alone, so I actually did mess up on that. Um... It just I had that bad experience the bear up on the mountain earlier and uh Hello gentlemen. We come in peace. Those words mean nothing coming from people like you. Look at what you've done to us. Look at us! We live like animals, scrabbling in the dirt. Well I had Violence isn't the answer! Maybe you live in a different America than we. Men like Vanderlint will lead you to disaster. I think we've already experienced disaster. The likes which you could only imagine. Put your hands up! We come in peace! What was he says, Marston? You call this a meeting? Give me your damn weaponry. This is not what we agreed to. You shut your mouth, you treacherous snake! <laughs> Holy shit, damn it, Dutch! 
Yeah, when I remember when that first happened, I was um, I did not expect that to happen to Nastus. Uh, snake oil. Here we go. Nastus didn't deserve that. It, it, Professor should have got shot, not Nastus. That's the thing. That's that's a recurring theme in Red Dead Redemption. Is um uh, they built up really interesting characters, and then what happens is they just kill them off in just some um, very unexpected ways. I wouldn't say stupid ways because um uh it's part of the story. But uh you know this that was a very unexpected death. Same thing with what happened with Sean. Okay, once we're in Blackwater, we'll be safe. Let's go. I can't see any more of them. Come on, Professor. Let's get you back to Blackwater. I'd appreciate it if you would, Mr. Marston. I'm a shadow of my former self. And sound. Thank the Lord. So much for a meeting of minds. Thank you, Mr. Marston. I could be boiling in a pot right now if it wasn't for you. Get some rest, Professor. I think the next mission is going to be the Professor's final mission. Um. Yeah. Back between 6 p.m. and 5 a.m. Okay. Professor. Oh, it's you, dear boy. Come in, come in, and shut the door. What's going on? You leaving? Yes, sir. Yes, I am, sir. You know, you know the thing, the thing that is vital, without which scholarship cannot proceed, sir. No, I don't. Not having a bullet in your flipping neck, sir. I am not cut out for this. Not, not cut out for this at all. <laughs> nope. The fucking savages! Savages! 
I think we all are. Not me, sir. I'm from Connecticut. I'm a professor at Yale. I write books. I do not deserve to die out here. Where's my tincture? So, um, uh, can you imagine that there was people like this professor in this time period, people just like him, just, you know, academics like this, they'll write nonsense, and they, these guys wrote books about this type of stuff back then, and people actually took this seriously and thought that this was, you know, that their IQ would get better or something like that by reading nonsense like that people like this would write. People would actually believe stuff that people like this idiot would write. You okay, Professor? Oh, dandy, sir. Just dandy. Oh, oh great heavens above! Is that you, John? Hello, Dutch. <laughs> I think that's what they call two for the price of one out here in this wonderful place. Maybe so, Dutch. You and, and, and your friend there, the Professor? We're going to kill the both of you. <laughs> Why you want to do a thing like that? I don't know. Sport, I guess. Fair enough. Uh, Why don't I come out there? We fight. Let the professor go and send your boys back to their families. Well, that, that sounds like a beautiful plan, John. Only problem is my boys here. They already lost their families a long time ago. We aren't thieves, John. We're fighting for something a, a bit like you. Only we're fighting for an idea, not just for ourselves. That's beautiful, Dutch. You always were a fine speaker. I was. Now, would you kindly send that academic out here so we can show him what we really think about the art of anthropology? Pizza, what are we going to do? I'm gonna hand you over to him and watch him tear you limb from limb. What? I'm just oh. kidding. We're gonna run. I wouldn't mind doing that, actually. Get you back to your ivory tower. Oh, thank you. Thank you, sir. Oh, thank you. We're still here. Come on. <laughs> Also, for people wondering why Dutch's gang is also so violent, one of the reasons is that Dutch's gang, a lot of them were actually from the uh, Skinner brothers before they collapsed. <laughs> Good day, sir. Uh, madam. Look here, sir. What is the meaning of this, this outrage? You two stay down and shut up. Come on, we can get to the roof this way. Let's go, you'll be a lady. Do something! He's going to kill me! Mister, you shall die in my death. Oh. Oh, whoa! I didn't even see that, that he got, um, he got... That they grabbed him, I, I didn't even notice that. Uh... Stay back, or the teacher gets it! My God, you took your sweet time! What do we do now? They've got us pinned down on both sides. Bastard! Okay, gotta time this right. Hey, car cannon is usually a one-hit kill. Okay, that roof's clear.
There we go. Uh, one other thing I was gonna say about Professor McDougal, um... You know what's so ironic about his name? He's Irish-American, that's, uh, and so he's a professor of this, you know, um, eugenic stuff. The, the, the thing that's really ironic about that is that eugenics was also used against Irish people. So, um, uh, Irish people, Polish people, um, uh, were also heavily discriminated in this, uh, in this time period. And so there was, uh, they, there was people that believed that Irish people, Polish people, Italians, that they were also inferior to Anglos, uh, Anglo-Saxon people. That was also another, um... So he's, like, he's writing those, like, those books when those exact same writings were also used against the Irish. Wow, he got far. Okay. Can't even get a clear shot. Let's go. There we go. Oh, uh, what do we got here? Oh, uh, okay. Damn. You can still run away. I can't believe I'm out of here. Okay. I think we're clear now. Research is complete. Much as I thought, there's no civilizing this savage land. I could have told you that for nothing. Ah, but they'll give me a prize in New Haven for this. <laughs> well, they would be better. Well, goodbye, Mr. Marston. Best of luck, dear friend. So long, Professor. So long, sir. Also, um, uh, if you want to know what ends up happening to him, I'm actually going to have a lore video on what happens to a lot of the Red Dead Redemption characters after the story in, um, in this game. So there's actually a few of those characters of epilogues which you can find out what actually happened to them after the events of the game. But... I guess we will, um, uh, we will wrap it up here, guys. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this part. If you did, drop a like, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care, everyone. Have a wonderful day, guys.